Welcome to Left, Right, Center, where we are covering Colorado politics, first on CBS News Colorado. I'm political specialist Sean Boyd with our analyst, Democrat Mike Dino, Republican Dick Wadhams. Good to see you guys again. It's been a minute. Yeah, it has been a while. I hope you've recovered from the November election because we've got another one just right around the corner here. For the first time in more than a decade, Denver has an open seat for mayor. 17 candidates are on the ballot, and last night, 16 of them were on stage for a two-hour debate at Regis University. Uh, CBS Rent News Control Colorado has... was the media sponsor. Due to the large pool of candidates, we are focusing our coverage on the top six fundraisers. They include Democrats, former Chamber CEO Kelly Bruff, State Representative Leslie Harrod, former State Senator Mike Johnston, and current state senator Chris Hansen and city councilwoman Debbie Ortega, along with business owner and Army veteran Andy Rougeau, the lone Republican. No surprise, affordable housing and homeless encampments were front and center in the debate. We need to enforce our camping ban to get people who are dealing with severe mental health or severe drug addiction issues into the service they need. When I walk to the park behind my house with my three old my arms, we will see a man with his pants around his ankles using his restroom. It is not compassionate to let that happen. It's not compassionate to step over someone sitting in a tent in the streets. The compassionate thing to do is to get those people into the mental health and drug addiction service they need in our shelter system. This is a moment to really reevaluate. We're gonna spend a quarter billion dollars, $250 million this year on different aspects of responding to this crisis and we're seeing a negative result. The numbers are getting worse in our streets, not better. So this is a moment to reevaluate, use evidence-based programming and budgeting like I've done at the state level to make sure we're spending our money very carefully and with effect, and we absolutely have to enforce Denver's camping ban to make progress. I've made a commitment to end unsanctioned encampments my first year in office. In essence, we have to stop sweeping people endlessly from neighborhood to neighborhood and instead get in get into safer locations. Temporarily, I'll create sanctioned camping sites so we can build until we can build the housing and shelter we need. I won't do it alone. I'll do it with the region, focused on data and prevention so we can get ahead of this issue. You can't move people off of a street if you have no place for them to go. What we know we actually have to do is provide permanent supportive housing for people to move to. No one should be homeless in this city. We have a moral obligation to make every, sure everyone has a place to stay. And we can put an end to people having to sleep in parks and public places. The way we do that is by opening micro communities where you can put 40 to 60 tiny homes. I would build 10 to 20 of these around the city where people can have built-in wraparound mental health services, addiction treatment, Thank you. workforce training to get back on your feet. We have many, many affordable housing projects in the pipeline waiting to get their permits. So that needs to be fixed, number one. I want to see the city of Denver do manufactured housing and be able to do that on public lands where we can bring the costs down by 40%. We could do both for sale and rental housing. It is extremely important that we have more diverse housing stocks so young people can become first time home buyers and build generational wealth so they can get on their way. We do that by having, yes, more diverse housing stock. Also, by using Denver's land, land owned by Denver, DPS, and RTD, to build diversity, diverse housing across the city and county of Denver. All right, Mike, did you hear any new proposals with regard to affordable housing and homeless encampments? Nothing new. I mean, we're, we'll, I mean, the, the voters are on the same three issues as the candidates. It's homelessness, public safety, crime, and, of course, affordability right. as it relates to housing. And uh, you know, I think at this point, with so many candidates in the race, I mean, the most interesting thing last night was the guy who wasn't there. And he wasn't there. <laughs> Al Gardner wasn't there because his <laughs> daughter a had a, a grandchild. Yeah. And so that was that. That got the most applause. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we have a shorter election, and that really changes the dynamics. And so those who have money are going to really have to get their message across on how they put it out in paid media, TV, social media, and such. And that's really where they're going to distinguish themselves. Yeah, Dick, housing, homelessness, you know, we knew this issue was coming. Sure. And yet some of the issues, were, you know, some of the answers were rather vague. You know, did any candidate in your mind stand out as, as particularly strong on this? Not really. I think they're all saying the same things, essentially, although a couple of them are really far to the left uh, of the candidates. But, Sean, what amazes me about this issue it's, and I kept thinking about it last night watching the debate. 
is that they kind of act like, God, this thing, all of a sudden, this thing, this homeless thing sprung up. <laughs> It's like it's been creeping up for years. And anybody who spends any time downtown um, working or recreating knows it. And, and now it's reached, it, it has truly reached a crisis proportion. And you, but you, watching, and then the other thing I thought last night is several of those people who are main candidates, they've been in, in either public office or they, they had very high positions of, of civic responsibility. And what were they doing all this time? Nothing. I mean, I, I, just, I just think... It's it, Denver's on the cusp of, of of never coming back from this, and I think that was shown last night that they don't they don't really know what to do even now. So. You know, I interviewed Mayor Hancock mm. uh, just a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, and he took a shot at yes. at these candidates for that very mm -hmm. reason, yes. saying, "Where have you sure. been, huh? Where have you been? Yes. You come, come and is this something voters hold against them?" Well, when you run a campaign, you you point out the extremes, and we saw that from the clips. I mean, people <laughs> want to make it seem like. You know, this is the end of the world for this city. Uh, in, in December, New York's mayor announced what they're doing for the city. Yesterday, it was San Francisco's mayor. All cities are facing these issues. And so when you run for office, uh, you kind of blame the guy that's there and come in with a new shiny plan. They did have some rapid fire questions last mm -hmm. night. Yes, no answers. One of them dealing with rent control, another dealing with, would you, you know, continue this camping ban, enforce the camping mm -hmm. ban. And on both of those, Lisa Calderon and Leslie Herod were the only standouts on mm -hmm. each, you know, saying that mm -hmm. they wouldn't enforce the camping ban. And Leslie kind of sat out the question of rent control, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. Does this set them apart, you think? Oh, I do. I think Leslie Herod, she did establish herself as the furthest to the left. I do think that in terms of, of the uh, and. Um, uh, so, and I think the, the longer this campaign goes, Sean, those there there was, uh, differences will, will emerge. But that, that was one thing last night. Uh, although I was kind of surprised Kelly Bruff was not nearly as tough on, on, the, on the, the camping ban as I thought, in terms of being for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, she, she's, she's got an interesting position. That, Give me a year and I'll quit these things. Well, <laughs> you know what? They ought to be, they ought to be, they ought to be done now. You, speaking so. of Bruff, she was one of the candidates that talked about renovating the downtown office yes. buildings. Yes. You know, does this seem like, you know, you're kind of like throwing in the towel on a vibrant downtown? Town by saying we're going to turn them into residential. I not... thought that was throwing in the towel, Sean. I mean, when well, we're just going to turn these empty office buildings because the employees don't want to go back because they like working at home and they're afraid of downtown Denver. And if you start turning office buildings into residential, I think that that is throwing in the towel. I didn't like. I was concerned about that. Yeah, so. I, I do think downtowns have to reinvent themselves. I mean. We, we tend to forget, you know, this is the, we, we spent three years in the pandemic and it changed the dynamics and employers, including the city and county of Denver, have a hard time keeping their employees in offices. They'll even have to assess what they do with their own office space. And so it is the reality we face today. I, I thought it was interesting in the debate, the two legislators uh, kind of traded barbs between each other. And mm -hmm. uh, I kind of expected that would start happening because each of them sat on the joint budget committee and right? they kind of know each other's secrets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got a chance to see a little bit of that. There was mm -hmm. a little bit of action there. And uh, we're focusing on six candidates. It does detract when they're 17. It really, yeah. you know, the vote uh, I think they're hearing what they want to hear on the issues. They're really trying to say, all right, who, who is the most capable of running this city? And that's going to take a while longer. Yeah. Yes. Well, in addition to housing, the candidates also talked about how they would approach crime, growth, transportation, and environmental issues in the city. Today, we're probably at 50% of our workforce being downtown, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and we have retail and restaurants who have grown to be able to support services for 100%. We have to transition our office buildings as quickly as possible to residential. So we reactivate downtown. We also have to inf make sure that we house and shelter people so they're not living on our streets because I think it makes our downtown more welcoming. Right now, if you go d downtown, you do not feel safe. That is why, as mayor, I will enforce our camping ban. I'll add former police officers, make it safe downtown again. So businesses aren't leaving Union Station and moving to Cherry Creek. So people don't say they don't feel safe getting out of their car and walking to the restaurant on a Saturday evening. I believe and know that the war on drugs is a failed war on drugs. What I did was defelonize simple possession of drugs. I did not legalize anything. What I will tell you is our failure as a city is not providing people with the services they need. 
If we want to reduce the fentanyl crisis and get after it, let's get people services and reduce that demand. Fentanyl is killing people today, regardless of if it's a felony or a misdemeanor. So the city of Denver is already moving to do the bus rapid transit along the East Colfax corridor. As the mayor, I would be working with Aurora and with Jefferson County so that we have that line that goes from one end of the metro area to the other. That then changes how our bus system works and our routes don't all have to come downtown. And then we close the gap for first mile, last mile by making sure that we have the connectivity. We have a massive opportunity in front of us. Electrify our buildings using heat pumps and hot water heat pumps. This is a billion dollar opportunity, multi-billion dollar opportunity, tens of thousands of new jobs. And here's the great news. It's gonna drastically reduce pollution, reduce the brown cloud, and we're gonna pay ourselves to do it because it pays off when we've all just had to pay big natural gas prices. Wouldn't you like to have to stop doing that? We have to take more aggressive action. That means doing common sense things like incentivizing ways to get fossil fuels out of our economy, electrifying buildings, electrifying vehicles, providing incentives for things like e-bikes and electric vehicles, but also making sure that they're equitable. So it's interesting, you know, most of the candidates, I think, said they support additional police officers, but did you hear any real solutions to rising crime? Anything that sat one candidate apart from another? You know, not particularly. I, I think the, uh, you know, when you're running for office, uh, the solutions to crime look pretty, you know, cut and dry. Uh, and then when you get in there, it's and I, you know, have had that experience, it, it, it's a whole different deal. Uh, so it, I, I think, you know, adding more police officers, not a bad idea. Uh, I know, you know, certainly when I worked for Mayor Webb, that was on our campaign plank when we ran for re-election. But when you look at, it, you know, where are you going to get the training for them? Uh, you find the people to do that profession. It's harder to add them than you really want to. None of them, uh, there were, when they asked, uh, you know, some of the key candidates weren't looking to add any more money to the police right. department. Right, uh, And so if you're not looking to add more money to the police How department, you police you, it's officers? hard to add more police officers. <laughs> right. Definitely. Dick, what about you? Did you hear anything that set one candidate apart from another? Well, I mean, they I, were all pretty, but and some of them less tough on crime than others. Right. But I'm just, but this whole notion about more cops, there's a reason why they're, what, with 200 positions short yeah, or something? Because about. people don't want to be a cop in Denver. They can't fill the academy, apparently. And it's because I think cops have been uh, uh, d d disrespected and, and in many ways kind of abused in Denver. And I think that's one of the, and I, you've got people who, I'm told that there are a lot of early retirements. They're just done with Denver. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think they've got to come to grips with that, too. Yes, cops misbehave at times, and there's no doubt about it. But I think in Denver, there's been a, a too much of a shift to being an, anti-cop. And I think that's, they totally missed that last night, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you heard a couple of the candidates there talk about climate policy. Mm -hmm. How big of a factor is that in the race? Well, uh, if, if you're looking at your, your home heating bills with natural gas, it's, it may be a big one right now. Yeah. Uh, when it comes time to vote, it, it may not be. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, Denver's electorate, as we've talked about, is much more liberal than it's ever been. And mm -hmm. for liberal voters, the environment's a big issue. And so I think some of the candidates are going to latch on to that. They need to distinguish themselves. And if that's the one thing that somebody remembers when they get their ballot, that this person's for a greener Denver, that may be the edge they need. But the disconnect on that, Sean, is that, is that we're, everybody's paying bigger uh, utility bills right now. Well, part of the reason for that is our headlong rush to wind and solar, which are not keeping up. Uh, the, uh, natural gas and coal are still kind of bailing out wind and solar right now. And, and it's just I, just, I just laugh when I hear people diving to, 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 a non, to, to, to abolishing fossil fuels. I'm thinking, well, if you, if you want to be cold and if you want to pay big bills, go ahead. I think because that's what we're experiencing right now. So... Based on the November election, we're going to switch gears here. Okay. Republicans are struggling even in some conservative parts of this state. Yes. Rougeau is running in very, very progressive yeah. Denver. Does he have a shot? Probably not. Although, if he, I do think there could be an attraction. If, if Denver residents finally get tired of walking over homeless people in front of their yard, watching them urinate on their yard, uh, having their, their, their cars stolen, 
And they might say, you know what, we need to do what New York did when they turned to Rudy Giuliani, who's not the greatest guy right now, <laughs> but when he was mayor of New York, he cleaned up that, that city. Um, or uh, Eric Adams is even in New York right now. I mean, Eric emerged from a Democratic field because he was kind of the tough on crime guy. I don't know, maybe uh, there's a kind of an outside shot, but, but no, probably not. You think, Mike? Well, I think he's going to give himself a shot. He just put another 250000 in. So he's uh, committed 750000 of mm -hmm. his own money. This race yeah. really will come down to how they portray themselves mm -hmm. uh, when the ballots come out in, in about a month. And if they have a good message and they look pretty good, and he's, he may even put more money in. Now, the key is he couldn't win a city council race where he lives in North Denver. <laughs> uh, and, and finding the voters he needs from a base that doesn't exist is tough. Yeah. So with so many candidates in mm -hmm. this race, it is highly unlikely, almost impossible, that anyone is going to get 50 percent of the vote at this point. So it's almost certain that this yeah. is going mm -hmm. to go to a runoff. Mm -hmm. It's early. but. Do you see any of these candidates sort of breaking free from the pack? Not yet. I mean, I agree. That's what I. I mean, that's <laughs> what, what I saw last night. Where yeah. probably any one of the six we're talking about, any any two of them. It's preseason. Yeah. It's preseason. Yeah. I mean, they're tra testing their messages. Uh, yeah. They're they're gearing up for when they've got to spend the money they've been raising, and then uh, lo and behold, on uh, April fourth, we'll have two two left running. And Sean, I'm standing by my endorsement of Mike Dino for mayor. I mean, I keep saying he's our guy, but uh, I'm waiting for Dig to bring that <laughs> bag of cash. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching this segment of Left Right Center. We will see you next time.